Hello people, I'm Paul White, you're watching Drummer Vision, and today we're talking about open hi-hats. So the goal of this particular exercise is that we want to be able to make an open hi-hat happen wherever we damn well feel like in a bar, right? And in this particular instance, it's going to be a bar of 4-4 four, four with a super straightforward groove, which is just eighth notes or quavers on the hi-hat and kick on one, snare on two, kicks on three at the end of three, and a snare on four. You don't have to do this particular one. You can make it more advanced to straight away if you want to, or we can make it simpler. Whatever your level, this same principle is going to apply. So we'll jump straight in. Open higher on the end of four. What's happening here is we are literally aiming to have this hope of open hi-hat rather happening on the end of four, and we want it to be fully open, and we want it to be shutting on beat one of the next bar super tight, right? Now, we need to make sure with all of these open hi-hats that we're anticipating the movement before we get to it. And what I mean by that is, if you were to play a snare hit, for example, you wouldn't go, okay, I'm gonna hit the snare on the one, here it comes, one and two and three and four and one, right? You don't do that, do you? You don't wait for the beat, you anticipate the beat. You go one and two and three and four and, right? So you're coming up beforehand. You need to make sure you're landing on the one, obviously. So it's exactly the same principle with the open hi-hat foot, apart from it's in reverse, right? So in other words, we don't want to be getting like this, we were hitting the hi-hat and then the foot's coming just after it, or we're getting a this kind of wishy-washy half-baked thing, right? So we want to make sure we're getting it there. And to do that, a super good way of, uh, of getting used to doing it is to you can either physically put a drumstick here, or you could just imagine that there's a barrier here. I, get, I do this with my students all the time. I'll hold a drumstick above their knee or, the, or above their foot, and I'll say, hit that on the beat. So you're thinking of it as like an, an anti-beat, a reverse beat, right? So if I was going one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so hopefully you see my, my knee in this shot. I'm pretty sure you can. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. So we're making sure it's all the way up at the point we want. And that's really all there is to it. We just need to make sure that coordination of the feet is good. And just for a second on that particular one, because we're coming up with the left foot and then we're landing with both, you are gonna be in limbo for a second where you've got both feet in the air. Okay, so what you'll probably start, when you first start, sorry, you'll probably find that you do quite a lot of this business whereby you, you don't really have the stability on the stool. But trust me, practice it and you will learn to engage your core and you'll get super good at just sitting up nice and straight and doing that. So that's the end of four. Let's move on to beat four. Exactly the same thing. So we're still doing the same hi-hat motion. We're still anticipating the beat as I was just talking about. But this time, the open hi-hat's falling on top of the snare and then it's landing on the end of four. So it's landing on its own and then we're, uh, we're playing the kick drum on the beat one after it. So the coordination is now shifted from this to now an incredibly short march, just a left, right, and that's it. Three and. So all that's happening in this particular one, again, we're still concentrating on making sure that open hi-hat's coming up at the right point, coming down on the next hi-hat, but we've got to think about the coordination with our right foot again. On this one, it happens to be coming up as the right foot comes down. So we've got three with the kick, and then we've got the and of three with the kick, while we're then opening with the left foot there, and then it's landing on its own. So we're getting right, right, left. Right, right, left. Three. So for this one, we're getting a little bit of hopscotch on the go, whereby we're going three, Okay, so we're getting a right foot down. So we're like hopping on our right foot while we're bringing up our left and then we're landing on both feet. Right, both, right, both. And again, make sure that we're fully up when we hit that three on the hi-hat, closing at the same time. Two and two, one and and one, 
all going to be exactly the same principles. They're virtually the same as the ones I just showed you. So that's, I won't waste your time going through those two. It's all the same thing though. Sit there, figure out the coordination of where the open hi-hat's happening, what's happening with your right foot, what's happening with your left hand, and just make sure they're super, super solid. And you want to obviously be doing these on repeat, you know, to do these one at a time, don't just try and just like work back through them straight away. Make sure they're all sounding nice on, on a repetitive phrase. But then once you've done that, do try literally doing eight bars whereby you go four and four, three and three, two and two, one and one, and the other way around as well. There you go, that's in a super simple groove. Obviously, like I said before, you can then make this harder and harder and harder, harder, harder and harder and harder, and get some really complicated grooves happening, and just be able to sort of place that wherever you feel like it, or in multiple places. There's no rule saying you can only have one open hi-hat in a bar. So check that out, see how you get on, leave the comments below, leave questions for further videos you'd like me to make in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, you know the drill. I'll see you next time here on Drummer Vision.